Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. Today is the 18th of March as I film this, and things are a little crazy in the world right now. Luckily, so far so good, and I'm safe and healthy at home here, working from home. And I'm gonna to try to keep making videos for you guys. I, I wanna do something to at least take people's minds off what's going on in the world and possibly also help myself because while I do love working in the basement on these projects, I also love being outside and doing stuff. But anyway, this video is a quick revisit of the GAL PLA visit that I had just posted. A viewer, Isaac, sent me an Epix fast load cartridge. And if you recall from my last video, that was one of the things I was unable to test with the GAL PLA. So thank you, Isaac. Let's open this up and test it out with the GAL PLA and see how this thing works. So I never had a Commodore 64 as a kid. And because of that, I'm actually not too familiar with the role the Epic's fast load cartridge played in people's lives. I know that loading games on a 64 is really slow, and unless you have a fast loader, it can take several minutes potentially to load a game off of a floppy disk. So you could simply plug it into your Commodore 64 and accelerate your experience dramatically. Epic's fast load 64, and if you notice the date, 1984. So this was relatively early in the life of the 64. And if you could just pop this in and suddenly get dramatically improved performance on discs, well, that's certainly something that's worthwhile having. There's a couple reasons why I've never really looked into this cartridge. One of them is that my Easy Flash 3 cartridge also supports loading kernel images right into the 64's memory. And with a kernel, you can just load one like Jiffy DOS by CMD, and that accelerates loading dramatically as well. Although, with Jiffy DOS, you also need to have a matching ROM chip in your disk drive. The Epix Fast Load, on the other hand, this works with a standard floppy drive that's not modified and still gives you accelerated performance. In addition, the Easy Flash 3 can emulate the Fast Load cartridge. Let's take a quick look at that and just see it in action. Here's my ZIF64, and if you remember my last mail call video, a viewer had sent me a new badge for it and some other things to fix this thing up. I haven't applied that yet because I'm gonna retrobite this case, but I mentioned that there was some writing on the side of the case in permanent marker. Well, thanks to everyone's suggestions, I have pretty much removed that entirely from the side of the machine. And I used a dry erase marker to write over it, and after a whole bunch of attempts, I actually pretty much got it off entirely. So thanks for everyone who suggested that. All right, the machine is connected up and let's take a quick look inside. Installed is the GAL PLA right here. Below that I have a Swin SID and everything else in here is bone stock. Turning on the machine, we should pretty much get the stock C64 kernel and we do absolutely nothing modified at all. Let's pop the Easy Flash 3 into this machine, turn it on. So I've shown the Easy Flash 3 on the channel a bunch of times, but I really do like this cartridge. Here you have a list of games and other packages that I've loaded into these slots, including Adrian's tools in the G slot. Over here on the top left are various kernels, and there are eight slots for kernels. I only have six in here, but there's Jiffy DOS 601, and there's other stuff like the SX64 kernel even. I mean, there's no point to have that on there, but it's more just for fun. And then down here is where you can load things like the Action Replay. I don't have anything in those, which is why they're grayed out, but I have a Super Snapshot 5 loaded in here, so this is a to a product that's a cartridge normally that allows you to freeze your 64, go into a debugger, an assembler, save sprites to disk, you know, do stuff like that. If we hit six for Jiffy DOS, this will exit out and then we'll end up in Jiffy DOS 601. So in combination with a 1541 or a 1571 with the correct ROM in there, you'll get accelerated load times. Let's plug in a 1541 with a Jiffy DOS ROM in it just so we can kind of see the performance we're gonna get. So I have two disk drives set up. On the top is a regular 1541. This has no Jiffy DOS in it. And on the bottom is the 1541C that I repaired in my last disk drive repair video. This one has Jiffy DOS in it now. And incidentally, it had a white faceplate that I've painted black. So that might be why this looks different to you. Personally, I prefer the two-tone color scheme. And I'm gonna be using this white or cream color drive with another machine where this will look more appropriate, this color combination. So first off, let's just try loading something on this bog standard disk drive using the stock C64 kernel and we'll time and see how long it takes. Okay, so for our test disk, I'm gonna use this copy of Odell Lake. It's an edutainment title by Mech. 
and it's old, so it shouldn't have any fast loaders of its own on the floppy and should load relatively slowly uh, without any of these extra fast loader technologies. So let's try this out first of all. Stick this in the bone stock 1541, we'll turn on the computer. I'm just gonna boot into kernel, stock kernel version three, so I push three. So I'm not gonna get into all the details of how fast loaders work on the 64 and why this stock disk drive is so absolutely slow. But let's just say that the serial communication protocol it uses is not optimized whatsoever, but the fast loaders take over the processor and the RAM inside the disk drive and allow it to work a lot more efficiently. I have load star comma eight comma one, and I have the stopwatch here and the floppy drive is ready. I'm gonna hit enter and start at the same time. Okay, well that was super fast. So let's see, I don't actually remember how to use old Dell Lake. Let's reset the stopwatch. I think when I type run, it will start to run the game and it will load the rest of it off the disc. Here we go, oops. Let's try that again. Here we go, start and enter, same time. About three minutes, 15 seconds. And yes, if you're not familiar personally with the 64 and the 1541 disk drive, that is not an unusual amount of time to load a game. It's that slow. Compared to its contemporaries at the time, like the Apple 8-bit line of computers, it's incredibly, incredibly slow. Okay, I have the 1541C connected to the 64. Let's stick Odell Lake into this drive, turn it on. And we're gonna load up the Jiffy DOS kernel, so that would be six. And we're gonna load star comma eight. Remember, this is just the first phase where it loads a little bit. All right, and I'm gonna take run, and I'm gonna push enter and start at the same time, and let's see if this is any kind of improvement. Okay, so it took me a few extra seconds to hit the button, but one minute and 48 seconds, probably more like one minute, 45 seconds, I also noticed that Odell Lake probably bypasses the kernel loading routines in some instances because the floppy drive light sort of blinks during loading, which is indicative of potentially its own fast loader routine. So I think the speed wasn't as fast as it could have been because only the initial loading phase of the game was using Jiffy DOS and then it switched over to the game's own routines, which are rather slow, but work the same speed whether you have Jiffy DOS or not. All right, let's put Odell Lake back in the stock disk drive here. Let's take Easy Flash out and we'll put in this Epix fast load cartridge. So this is both gonna be a test to see if this even loads with the GAL PLA at all, and then we'll test the speed of this. Now, Daniel said that this cartridge does some extreme trickery to get loaded into the kernel space somehow. So I think that that is where we might run into an incompatibility. And just so you guys know, I did clean the contacts on the cartridge before sticking it in, but this is the first time I'm trying it. So this cartridge may or may not work. Isaac didn't say if he knew this worked, he said he had it in storage. So here we go, it probably works. Oh, well, there we go. It looks pretty stock, except it has the word fast load here now. So I did a quick Google search for the manual for the fast load, and it does offer some enhanced commands for doing things a little more quickly than the old loads, you know, quote, quote, dollar sign, all that kind of stuff. So let's just try out a couple of these shortcuts. So first off, it says I can do a directory by just typing dollar sign. We hit enter. <laughs> Whoops, I had the disk drive turned off. So obviously that's not gonna work. Okay, so we can type dollar sign for directory. Oh, there it is, nice. It changed the font color to white as well, make it a little easier to see. Next, there are some shortcuts for loading and saving basic programs, but what we wanna do is we wanna load the binary program, and it says you type percent and the name, which I assume we can just type a star and hit enter, and let's see what happens. Searching for star, good sign. Okay, I have the timer reset on the iPad, and I'm gonna type run, and we're gonna hit start, enter at the same time. Okay, there's the time, three minute and 15 seconds. Let's just review the results. I saved a screenshot. So this was the first time uh, stock C64. Here's the time with Jiffy DOS. So we got a decent time savings, not super fast, but hey, at least it wasn't three minutes and 15 seconds. And then we have, whoa, the time with the Epic's fast load. 
Well, that didn't seem to make any difference, at least with this software. I think people in the comment section will probably be able to comment and let me know how this cartridge worked for you when you were a kid. I assume this cartridge does work. Perhaps this particular game, like I said, it uses its own fast loader, so to speak, and it must override the kernel routines. And yes, Jiffy DOS did speed up the loading process, but not dramatically. So I'd love to hear your stories about how much time this saved you when you were a kid. Well, since Odell Lake was such a failure at testing these fast load speed times, I stuck in a copy of Portal, which is a new game, and it's one that's just a single PRG file. It doesn't have any fast loader routines of itself. And I loaded this up on stock, then Jiffy DOS, and then Ep Epic's fast load. Here are the results we got. Stock kernel, 1 minute 26 seconds. Jiffy DOS, 17 seconds. That is an insane difference, isn't it? Going from minute 26 to just 17, it's hard to believe, right? But Epic, Epic's fast load, 37 seconds. So that is not as good as Jiffy DOS, but I mean, we're talking three times, you know, two and a half times faster than stock. So definitely this cartridge works and it's a nice speed improvement as well. One of the things I wanted to test actually, now that I have the real Epic's fast load, let's take this out and stick in this Easy Flash cartridge back in again. Turn this on. I still have it hooked up to the stock disk drive without any extra ROMs in it. I think if I go into D Multi Easy, I think that's where I have a copy of the fast load cartridge. Oh, yeah, look, it's the first thing. In fact, there's a whole bunch of different fast loaders here. And there's all these other ones, which, well, actually, some of these definitely aren't fast loaders. Micro Assembler, Zaxxon, looks super Zaxxon. That's interesting. That's the cartridge we tried that says cartridge version. And of course, I tested on uh, the 64 with the gal. Yeah, this is actually the, the, the game. Interesting. I'm assuming because this game is emulated on the Easy Flash that there's no actual, like I wouldn't be a good compatibility test. You have to use the real hardware. And I assumed when I said I didn't test fast load that the fast load that's on here, and if I hit enter, oh yeah, okay, so it takes us into basic, is not the same as testing with the actual cartridge. Like, this is doing some kind of emulation. It's got to be different the way it works. Well, why don't we run a speed comparison to the real fast load cartridge? This was the actual fast load, Epic's fast load, 37 seconds or so. So we'll go back into clock and we'll reset. And I type percent and a star, and I'm gonna hit enter and start simultaneously. I got 37 and 30 seconds, and that's with my reaction time to hit the stop button. If we save this as a screenshot and go back to the photo gallery here, 37, 30. Okay, well, we're, you know, within tenths of a second apart from each other. So I'd say that that's working well. Well, hey, while we're at it, why don't I just test out some of those other fast loaders that we saw in here? We have Warp Speed version 2.0. Who knows what this does? Let's Let's check it out. Ooh, check out the different basic screens. C64 Warp Speed 2.0 Alien Technology. So let's load, I don't know the wedge commands on this, so we're just gonna use the standard way of doing it. Reset, oops, that is, that is not the clock. That is the screenshot. Okay, here we go. This is Warp Speed 2.0. This seems really fast. Okay, that's pretty incredible. That's actually faster than Jiffy DOS. Uh, Jiffy DOS was, I think, 17 seconds. This is what we just got, 12 seconds, right? 17 seconds, that was Jiffy DOS. That's amazing. This warp speed thing is so fast. And this is a bone stock disk drive. Uh, I'm kind of amazed at the insane speed that this gets. Does anyone know more about this warp speed and why this is not more commonly used? Like. If this beats Jiffy DOS and you don't even have to put a ROM in the disk drive, why isn't everyone using this? Okay, so back at the menu here, we have Mach 5 version 1.2 BR5. And at the bottom it says faster version, no 1571 or 1581 support. Well, that's fine. I don't have those disk drives connected right now. Let's hit enter on there. Mach 5 with warp drive. And we'll go into the clock. So 12 seconds is the one to beat, right? And here we go. So the screen blanked out because if you turn off the VIC chip while you're doing things on the 64, you actually get 
more performance. Uh, you lose a bit of CPU clock cycles to the VIC chip, it steals them. So turning it off actually speeds up the process. Now, this is already slower than the other one. So really, why would we use this over the other one? Especially because you can't see what's happening while it's loading. So 36 seconds for Mach 5 V1B compared to 12 seconds for the warp speed, 37 seconds of the Epic's fast load. So this is pretty much on par with fast load, but fast load doesn't blank out the screen while it's loading. 37 seconds for the fast load again, and 17 seconds for Jiffy DOS. So nothing is beating this warp speed right now. There's another version here, but it says it's slower and it supports those other disk drives. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. So the question is, does Epic's fast load work with the Gal PLA? Yes, it does, absolutely. This Gal PLA continues to just be amazing. I can't wait till some of you get these in your hands and you can start reporting back on any compatibility issues you find. So far, I've been unable to find any. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do. You hit that thumbs down button. Put your comments and your suggestions down in the comment section below. You can subscribe for more videos. There'll be lots more in the future. And stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.